one. Uh, he's originally from London and got to know the devotees there. And then um, later on, uh, of course, did many different services at the London Temple and preaching. Later on, in '94, received sannyas initiation from His Holiness Tamil Krishna Goswami. That was requested to go to Asia and flourish. is based in Hong Kong. He's traveling in many other places like Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, um, Malaysia, Thailand, and of course in India for almost like 30 years now. And uh, through his preaching, of course, he has touched the, the heart of countless people and give them guidance and spiritual inspiration. And Marge is also an initiated Dikshagur in ISKCON and a very respected and well-known senior member of our movement. So we're very, very grateful that you come. Actually, Marash has not come to Europe for the last 30 years. <laughs> he was always preaching in Asia. This is the first time Marash has come to Europe after a long period, so we're very fortunate to have your association. And yeah, we'd like to ask you to address us and say a few words. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let me first begin by offering my obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Prachayani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachin Deshatayani I offer my obeisances to all of you. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Chak Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patita Nam Pavani Dyo Vaishnavidyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhattavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama. Hare Hare So as Krishna Premarup Prabhu said, I had somehow I had the amazing good fortune to meet Srila Prabhupada in London at our temple in London. It, at the original temple, it was a place called Number Seven Bury Place. It was a rented house in central London, near to the British Museum. And I was so fortunate. I had come to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Uh, I had, uh, just a few months earlier, I had graduated from university and I come to London, I'd taken a job there, working in London. And I purchased one of Prabhupada's books. Not from a devotee, but from a bookstore. I purchased the Krishna book and I I took it home and my friend had a book also by the same author which was a book called The Topmost Yoga System and so I was very intrigued that this one man could write so many books, different books and the book was certainly very colorful and vivid, the Krishna book, it was a beautiful silver bound book with a, this wonderful picture of Radha and Krishna on the front and many illustrations inside the book and I was really captivated by the beauty of the book but when I read the topmost yoga system then I was it, it had a, a, a very deep impact on me unlike many you know I've been reading a lot of books and I've been looking for a spiritual guide and I was thinking about taking initiation from people but somehow I never got around to it but after I read Prabhupada's book, I was convinced that this is something real. This is something which I can understand. You know, other people, they write books, but I would find them always very difficult to understand. What do they mean? What are they talking about? But when I read Prabhupada's book, everything was so clear to me. So I was really impressed and I started to visit the temple in London and ended up becoming a full-time devotee there in London. And Prabhupada came there after some time. You know, the devotee was always saying, Prabhupada's coming, Prabhupada's coming. <laughs> and he would never come. You know, we would wait and, oh no, he's coming later, he's coming, he's coming, you know. And now he's came, you see. He just came. Hello. 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 
terlalu pagi. Prabhupada came, kept, he finally came, and when he did come, it, there was no disappointment, you know, he was the, the living embodiment of pure devotion for Lord Krishna. You know, I was a very young person, I was, at that time I was 21 or something, you know, so yeah, I, was, I was totally new, I didn't know anything, but I was very eager to hear. Srila Prabhupada. And he gave us a lot of opportunity to hear. He was always speaking to us. He was always trying to guide us and teach us. And another thing which I liked was that he lived with us. He, and he lived in the same building with us. I was telling the devotees in Zurich just last night how we were living in London and the building was quite small and there was not much space. So one devotee had come over from Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, they had a big center there. And the devotee came over to, to our center in London. And he looked at our center and he said, Oh, Prabhupada cannot stay here. No, no, this is not good enough for Prabhupada. And he wrote to Prabhupada and told Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, we're not going to let you stay in that little room when you come here next time. We're going to get you a nice suite in the hotel. And Srila Prabhupada wrote back and said, I don't like to stay in hotels. And he said, I like that room. <laughs> but the devotee was saying, that room's not good enough for you, Prabhupada. But Prabhupada said, I like that room. So it was really endearing to all of us how much Prabhupada embodied the mood of simplicity and austerity and at the same time he was rich in deep knowledge he could answer all questions on the philosophy everything was so crystal clear whenever Srila Prabhupada spoke so I was so fortunate to have that opportunity to hear him and to see him I saw him in London. Later on, I moved to USA and I saw Prabhupada also in USA. And there was no difference. Wherever Prabhupada went, Prabhupada was the same person. He wasn't one person when he's in England, a different person when he went to USA. But I remember how in USA, in New York, I would see him in the garden in his gumsha and he'd put his mat out on the, on the lawn and have a massage there in the garden. You know, and he lived so simply how he did everything. And then again, I was with Prabhupada also in India. I'd gone to India. Srila Prabhupada wanted us to go to India to help to develop the preaching there in India because at that point, of course, there were very few Indian devotees. And the people who had brought the movement to India, we were all Westerners. And Prabhupada especially wanted British people to go there because they didn't need a visa even at that time. And it was difficult for Americans. So we were in India and I saw Prabhupada in India, how he lived and how he did, did so many amazing services how he was traveling and how he was constantly preaching everywhere and taking care and guiding all of us devotees. And we were so raw, we were so uneducated and uncultured, we didn't know anything. Prabhupada had to train us from the beginning, from scratch. So I, I feel so much indebted to him. And of course, you know how Prabhupada he came here to the city, Geneva, and he stayed for eight days. You know, that really shows how much he valued Geneva. He considered this to be an important city. And he put his time and energy into preaching here. And he wanted to see us also cultivate Krishna consciousness in this city, in this part of the world. It was very important to him. So I was very much eager to come and take part in this program today because I want to encourage, I've been for the 
last few years I've been involved with the preaching here in Geneva and I'm very happy to come here this time and try to help and encourage the devotees. And certainly I'm sure it's very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada that we try to do something here in Geneva and continue the legacy which he has given us. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna.